All right, guys, welcome. Hey, I'm going to do a quick little demo on testing antifreeze engine coolant and this Toyota Tacoma here is our lab vehicle. Um, we want to test the freeze strength, we're especially now we're coming into wintertime. We want to test the freeze protection in the summertime. You want to make sure you're testing the boil over protection, see what the boil limit is um, on your mixture. Ideal mixture is 50-50 antifreeze and water. That makes an ideal coolant. 50-50 um, mixture is going to give you generally around a minus or negative 34 degrees Fahrenheit freeze protection, which we need a minimum of around here because no, it doesn't always get that cold, but there are times in the winter time with wind chills that we see, you know, below zero temperature. So we want to play it safe. All right. So first up, we're going to take our hydrometer. This is a cheap tool you can get. This is a blue point from snap on. It's still fairly inexpensive. Um, every texture, grab one of these, throw it in their vehicle maintenance drawer in their toolbox. You can buy them at Walmart, different things like that, different brands, all the auto parts stores. Um, it's a pretty simple tool. You'll see on the scale here, it has Celsius and Fahrenheit degrees. It has a little gauge in here, and it has a fill line that we're going to fill up to. All right? Let's take a look here and see if we can do this. We want to stick this down into the radiator, squeeze the bulb. We didn't quite get enough, so we're going to squeeze that out, bring it up again, and that time we got plenty. So I always bend this over and pinch it off so that way we don't make a mess. And then what I like to do is I like to come in here and tap that. What that does is that releases any of the bubbles that are in here um, to get more of an accurate reading. You can't take a reading sideways like this. It has to be up and down. Think of this fill line. Make sure that it is parallel with the ground. All right. So. We want to keep it level and we're seeing here we can see that this is only good to a zero degree fahrenheit freeze protection that's not good that's a problem we're gonna to have to fix this on this lab vehicle because if this sits outside this winter it's going to get below zero a couple times probably throughout the winter um we could have cracked engine block cracked radiator split hoses a lot of it, a lot of damage so we want to correct this all right and one way to correct this is going to be um can drain the radiator a little bit and then add straight antifreeze to it, run it, let it cycle, open and close the thermostat, retest it and keep adjusting accordingly. It's a little time consuming, but that's just what you got to do. On this one, since it hasn't had a coolant service in a long time, we're actually just going to go ahead and do a complete drain and fill. We're going to drain the radiator, drain the system out, um, not do a flush because it doesn't look too cruddy in there. The sample itself doesn't look cloudy or dirty or anything. So the coolant as far as contaminants doesn't look too bad. So we're not going to do necessarily a whole flush or a back flush with a garden hose or anything like that, or put any chemicals in here to flush it. We're just going to do a simple service, a drain and fill, and go from there. Uh, when we go back together with it though, when we go to fill this back up, what we'll have to do is we'll have to put some full strength antifreeze in there. I'll probably put um, a half of the first jug of full strength antifreeze in there, and then a 50-50 mix from that point on. Reason being is, is draining and filling the system, you're never going to get all of the previous coolant out. There's going to be coolant in the block, still coolant in the cylinder head. Some engines have block drains that you can pull to drain, um, but you're never going to get it all out. All right, there's going to be some sitting in the bottom of the heater core um, and some of the hoses. So I always start with probably about half of the first jug of antifreeze, of straight antifreeze, and then do my 50-50 mixture in the jugs after that, cycle it, drive the vehicle, let it do some heat cycles, open and close the thermostat, recheck it, and make adjustments as needed, all right? This is something that I recommend doing at every oil change. It's a good idea just to grab one of these. When you're doing an oil change, check your fluids, just do a quick check, all right? When you're done, as you can see, I just went ahead and squeezed it back into the radiator. Um, the tool, I like to take a little cup of clean, fresh water and rinse that out when I'm done and uh, put the tool back where it belongs. All right. The next way I'm going to show you is using a refractometer. It's a pretty cool little tool, a little more accurate, I believe. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to put a sample of your fluid here. You're going to look through this up at the light and you're going to take your reading on the scale. Let's see if I can get this up here so you guys can see this on the GoPro cam. Yeah, so that's what it's going to look like when you're looking through this, and you're going to have different scales you'll notice in there. 
this one does propylene glycol, ethylene glycol based antifreeze. It does um, washer fluid strength, freeze protection. And it also looks like in here, if I'm not mistaken, it has a DEF or diesel exhaust fluid mixture too. All right. It also does battery electrolyte. So when we go into our battery lessons and we're testing electrolyte, we can use this as well. All right. So the way to do this, first and foremost, you always want to just don't assume somebody put this away the way they were supposed to and kept it clean. You want to clean this off. There is, I take a damp paper towel and usually wipe it off. And then there is soft cloths that are in the case that you wipe this off with. All right. So we don't scratch it. We need to take a little sample. So in the kit, it comes with a little sample taker. That's a technical term, sample taker. All right, we're gonna pull a little bit out of there. We do not need a whole lot. So we just have a little bit out of there. I'm gonna come over to the other camera here and see if we can see this a little better. All right. So what we're going to do is open this screen and we're gonna put just I usually put two or three drops there, okay? And we close this. Now, as you can see, it kind of pushes the antifreeze out. Now what we're going to do is hold this up to the light and take a look. This has a focus on it too, like a camera, okay? So we can turn and adjust this as needed. I'm gonna adjust this to get my focus. I'm gonna find the scale for ethylene glycol. And I see on there that this is a Celsius on that side. All right. This particular tool that I pulled out here is measured in Celsius. So we are going to have to do a conversion into Fahrenheit. But we can look there and we can see that this is saying it is good to about a minus I don't know, I'd say 17 degrees Celsius. So we'll have to convert that. Let's see if I can get this up here so you guys can see this. See what that line looks like when you're looking up through the light? Where that blue and white line intersects, that's where you're gonna take your reading from, all right? So it's a pretty neat little tool. So after that, what we have to do is we need to take not a hard rag, not a hard paper towel, one of our soft shop towels. And we are going to clean this off. All right. And then in our kit, there's a soft cloth that we're gonna take and we're gonna wipe that off too, okay? Make sure you clean it off real good. If you need to put a little bit of, rinse a little bit of water over it, I recommend that too in the sink, just rinse a little bit of water over it, clean it off real nice, put it back where it belongs, okay? Make sure we clean out our little squeeze tube here that we took a sample with. Put that back in the kit. And then we can make our adjustments from there. Let me go ahead and put the radiator cap back on this and lock it down. All right. So with that said, um, these are two ways that you can check coolant strength, um, freeze point protection, things like that. Right now, being wintertime, that is extremely important to make sure you check the freeze protection level on engine coolant. So we're gonna go out and check some of these on different cars out here and make sure our shop cars are okay. This one, obviously, we know is not good, um, only to zero, about zero degrees Fahrenheit. So we are going to fix this um, in, a, in a future video, a future lesson, okay? Um, there are a couple other ways to check coolant conditions. There is a way to check for uh, electrolysis because electrolysis happens from, elect the engine is grounded, the engine block, cylinder head, thing like that is grounded for electricity to run through this vehicle. So over the time with aluminum cylinder heads and, and different types of metals that the blocks and materials are made out of, the coolant, um, the incorrect, mixture, maybe too much water, and the electricity that runs actually through as a ground through the engine block can cause what they call electrolysis in the coolant. Um, that electrolysis basically takes away the protection of the vehicle, um, takes away the, the protection of the coolant, and can cause corrosion inside the, the engine, radiator, components, things like that. So there's a way to check that too that you guys are going to see in your lesson. 
um, and in a future lesson, there is a way to check the pH level using test strips, just like you would check a pool or something else doing water tests. There's a way to do that too, which you're going to see in future lessons, okay? Today's goal was just to test freeze protection using a hydrometer and a refractometer. Hope you guys learned something today. Check back later for more. Wartman out.